Hey guys, we're here today in Valheim, taking a look at the newest inhabitant of the swamp, the Abomination. The first thing we're going to look into is their attack ranges. You might be able to utilize this information anytime you're hunting them down in the swamp, but this would primarily be information that you would use if they attack your base, and we're using a ground wall or a trench to defend, which may not be likely as you're probably not building either of those in a swamp, but we may see Iron Gate add these guys to a raid down the road if they are not already hidden inside of one. When you do have a ground wall present and you are blocking a abomination, they can typically reach about six meters in range on their two primary hits with their arms. Their ground slam with their body does not seem to reach quite as far, but they do have a wide attack arc and will damage pretty much anything within that six meter range. If you are in a situation or an area where you can put a trench down, all you have to do is make it four meters deep on your trench and it will nullify all of the abomination's attacks. They won't be able to hit anything even two meters close, and your character can be safe from them pretty much all the way up to the edge. Based upon the model of the Abomination and the way they move, I do believe going even to two meters deep on the trench would allow them to escape it or be able to climb out, or at the very least would be very hard to do the trench and get flat edges to trap them without just ramping yourself back out to the ground. So I do recommend going at least four meters deep, and you shouldn't need to go any deeper than this in order to nullify one's attacks. The next area of interest is the Abomination's damage. The Abomination has three attacks, one with its front right arm, an attack with its front left arm, and then its body slam. The front right arm deals about 55 damage when it hits a player with zero armor on. Its front left arm attack and its body slam deal the same damage, being around 75, and again, this is when your player is not wearing any armor at all. I personally found the right arm attack the easiest to parry, or time out whenever it was going to hit, and I had a lot of struggles timing out the left arm attack and especially the body slam. The body slam is also a very difficult one to avoid because they typically only do it once you're really close to their body and their legs can get in the way when you're trying to evade and get out. So try and keep yourself from getting caught underneath the abomination because this body slam can be dangerous, whereas the left arm attack can be dodged a little bit easier and you can see its telegraph a little better. You can see on the screen here the damage of these attacks with no armor and then also accompanied with the damage they deal in tier 1 padded armor and then the middle ground of tier 1 bronze armor, which is likely what you'll be fighting these abominations in until you get equipped in iron from the swamp. You can see the damage with the bronze armor on is about 30 from the right arm and 45 from the body slam in the left arm, almost cutting them in half from wearing no armor. Now these numbers can still be pretty devastating with the food quality we have in the swamp. So I'd make sure that if you're trying to fight one of these guys with melee attacks and pairing with a shield, that you try to time out the right arm attack that hits a little weaker, and in my opinion is easier to parry, and then if you see the left arm attack loading up, you try and get out of the way and dodge, or just block it without a parry. Now that we have the Abomination's damages out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to their resistances. As you could probably guess, they are immune to poison damage, and they are immune to silver damage. They are not immune to frost, and I can see the frost effect on them when I hit them with an arrow. However, it does not last long, and their movement speed reduction is not very noticeable. So I wouldn't bank on frost being a usable damage type against these guys, and it will likely not help you in the long run. They are also resistant to all pierce damage and all blunt damage, which makes kiting them with a bow fairly difficult. They don't have any resistances or weaknesses to slash damage, and they are weak to fire damage, which them being a tree-based creature makes sense on both ends. Now that we know what they're weak to, let's take a look at what I believe is the best ways to take them down. Now every player that plays Valheim is going to have a different level of what they deem as cheesing an enemy. Personally for me, I deem cheesing an enemy as anytime I use terraforming to keep myself safe from damage or to edit its AI by trapping it, or if I use anything from the build menu to do the same, such as building up a hard platform to shoot from, or to impede its movement with a beam or something like that. Clearly, if you're going to use any cheese method or what I deem a cheesing method, then these guys can be taken down like anything else in the game. However, if you're going to use any grittier in-game methods to take them down, you might find the swamp biome makes this difficult, and some of the other adds can make this challenging. Clearly, one of the quicker ways to take them down would be simply to time out the parries, stun them, and get some critical hits in with a melee weapon. And if you're good at that gameplay against an abomination, then that works out. I, however, had difficulty timing out a couple of their hits. So I experimented with some other methods, and these are my top three. Number three would be kiting them with fire arrows. Whether you dodge and weave through trees, or you find yourself a horizontal tree to perch yourself on, and fire from above. This method is incredibly slow, 
However, it is easy to run away from these guys in most situations if you don't have another ad get in your way. The fire arrows do apply a dot to them even though they're wet from the swamp and it will apply through the rain or them running in the water since they're so tall. If you do use this method, I recommend sprinkling in regular arrows between the fire arrows while the debuff is going so you don't needlessly stack up burning. This is slow since they're resistant to the pierce, but it is probably the safest way to take them down if you have the time. Method number two is to build traps with bonfires. Bonfires like the fire arrows do not get put out by the rain in the swamp. So if you can find some decent spots to place them, you can kite the abomination through these and they will deal a roughly 25 damage of burning a tick and make quick work of the abomination's health bar. You can mix both methods and shoot them with your fire arrows while you're dragging them through the bonfires. You just have to make sure that the abomination is always chasing you because if they aggro onto the bonfire, they will destroy them pretty quickly. And then the number one way I have to take down Abomination is not always applicable, but if you are in a swamp with certainly fire spawners, drag the Abomination over to them. They cannot be destroyed like the bonfire, and they deal a whopping 35 damage per tick of burning. These certainly fire spawners can shred through an Abomination with little to no work from you. You just need to get the aggro, drag it through it, and if you've been working on your timing at all, equip any weapon and a shield and parry the Abomination's attacks while they're standing in the Certling Fire Spawner, and it will stun them and give critical damage to the burning, allowing you to annihilate these guys really quickly. While I recommend trying to parry and stun an Abomination in a Certling Spawner, I wouldn't do it with the Bonfire method, because the AoE or the cleave of their attack on you that you're trying to parry might destroy the Bonfire. All in all, there's quite a few ways to take down these creatures, and some of them require different skill levels than others, and will very much depend on what you're comfortable doing. There are slow methods like the bow, there are fairly quick methods, like using a great axe and parrying them, and then dealing damage in spurts, and then there are incredibly fast methods like the Certling Spawners, if those are available to you. Regardless of which one you go with, these abominations can be worth taking down outside of even getting root armor, since they now drop guck, and can be a very efficient way to fill your creepy green torches. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and gave you some insight into these new creatures on how best to handle them and equip for the fight against them. Hopefully I answered any questions you have on them. If I did not, let me know in the comments. That way when I get time, I can look into it and see if I can help you out with these creatures. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.